Hey guys, I've been wanting to do this video for a while. I decided to do it on uh, Tim's head. Now, if you take a look at DV did uh, an IOP program on his chunk that he did, and uh, actually, I think it was my flow flow numbers. I think he did it with my flow numbers, and uh, our port energy on our intake port was lower than we liked. It didn't even hit 300 feet per second on the on the program. So I'm just going to try to keep these a little bit smaller, even if they don't top out as well. In fact, I'm really trying to uh, boost up our numbers in the lower range. I have a feeling that's probably the way to go with such a restricted intake. Yeah, when we finally put some decent intakes and stuff on it, they'll be more limited but I'm thinking that along those lines right now you guys can uh, give me your input on on the comments but what I'm doing for this this test was I took that guide and I shrank it and rounded it now the reason I did that is I have I have this problem with I guess it would be one of DV's porting rules, you know, let the air go where it wants to go. And that sharp divider kind of forces it to go one way than the other. Rounding it more like the nose of a, a modern jumbo jet. Boeing, not, not French. Remember, if it's not Boeing, I'm not going. My wife loves to book me on French aircraft. They're fine, but never fails. Last time I was on a French aircraft that had a hydraulic failure just doing the, just doing the pilot's uh, pre-flight check. Not cool. That's when, you know, ignorance is bliss. Okay? When you're, you're sitting in in the cabin and you smell hydraulic fluid while he's testing the flaps usually it would you know stewardess we have a problem <laughs> that's the kind of passenger I am <laughs> it's a true story guys alright so I did that for a couple of reasons I wasn't really happy with the roof speeds and this casting is not not as thick as the DV chunk. Now, I don't know why, but it, it's not. So, it's going to be a more limited piece. At least this one port that I've worked on. I, I don't have any idea what the other ports are like. So, I'm going to have to get what I can get and not be upset type of thing. So, let's take a quick look at at the liquid. My good flashlight's getting charged. But our liquid starts all the way at the top of the bowl now, where it didn't before. Look at how much we've got on the center of that guide. A lot. Big wide hit. And we have some on the other side of the guide. Okay? If you really take a look, there is blue all along that side. There's blue all along here. Okay, yeah, we got a ton of chunky gunk right there. We've got some on the chamber. Let's show the bore. Okay, I like what I'm seeing on the bore. Less chunkiness than we had before. But look at it, splatters all the way around. I like the rounder guide. I've always liked the rounder guide. And you know what? They're a lot easier to cut than the sharp guide. The sharp guide is a pain. It's got to be just right. Otherwise, you know, you're putting more air to one side of the bowl than the other side. Now, why don't we take a look and see if it made any flow difference whatsoever. I mean, I like what it did with the liquid. As far as I'm concerned, the liquid is, is the best we've seen to date on this, I think. Let's take a look at the flows, and remember, 
these are Tim's heads. And the only thing I changed was that god. Okay. So, as far as this, I touched the, the, the short side radius a bit to try to bring up my flows over here. It only gave us a, a couple a couple CFM in this area. It's still nowhere near where we need to be as far as uh, our full uh, full flow. But I'm thinking more and more along, along the lines of popping these up as much as we can. You know, the sooner we get that column moving, since it's so incredibly restricted, I think the better off we're going to be. These numbers are quite good. Okay. Yeah, 300 is not nowhere near where I want it to be, but it's still a 1.78 valve. Okay, so what happened when I rounded the guide? So this is round versus sharp guide. I lost a touch there. Gained a touch there, gained a touch there. Equal. Lost a little bit. Lost a little bit. Lost a little bit. Lost a tiny bit. Lost a tiny bit. Gain. Lost a tiny bit. It really doesn't make that much of a difference as far as flow. But it's interesting what it did to the air speeds in the port. Okay. Here's your pinch. Our pinch went down everywhere. These were measured at 600, right? So it's moving a tiny bit more air, but our speeds are less. I don't know how that even happens, but that's the way it was. As far as our roof, I didn't like that discrepancy in the speeds. That discrepancy pretty much stayed. But our roof speeds went up. Now you got to think about when you pull out that guide, you give the roof more area. So what does that do? Well, more area usually means slower air speeds. Not in this case, it didn't. You have to also remember air is lazy, right? Like Charlie. It wants the quickest, easiest way out. And if you give it more area, there's less restriction there. More of it will go that way, right? Take a look at our short side speeds. 406, 400, 355. Minus, plus, plus. So what is that telling us? These are closer as far as speeds, which is good. This went up even more than it was. 400 and change is not great. I'm not thrilled with that. But I haven't cut this to the limits of the casting yet either. I don't know if I really want to. I'm so leery of putting so many hours of work into them and making something that's fragile. I really don't want to do that. So I'm going to have to work on it. In any case... I like the rounded guide. I think they're all going to get the rounded guides because I want the air to flow where it wants to flow, not where I want it to flow. Now, where do I go from this point? Well, I'd still like to even these up a little more. Okay. And by lowering this, it'll probably increase this speed. Just my little brain thinking, huh? you know. It it seems to work that way. You do you do work on one side of the roof, and it affects the other side of the short side radius. It has all to do with the resistance that the air is seeing and where it, where it wants to move. Just as a refresher, that's what the guide looks like stock. So what do you think they were trying to do with that big chunk of cast iron? They're trying to force the air to either side of the bowl, I think. 
and give it some direction. Okay. All right. We want it. We'll do this just the opposite way we did it last time, right? Let's see if I can set this up. Something, something like that. I think we had a little bit more of an angle like that. Okay, that's about where we want the the air to be moving, right? Right across the top of the short side. That's why our, our highest speed air is right in the middle of the short side. And just in front of the, the plug. It's about right. And if we notice, that's where our that's right where our liquid is going, right? The same thing on this one. against the short side. Something like that. Pretty darn close. You can see how much more area we have on the roof now. And I left this, I left a little bit here, giving it a little more restricted area because this side was fast didn't really make much of a difference. I made it a little rounded it so we can get more air around this side because this side was the slow side. In any case, that roof is way thick compared to the DV chunk, so I have plenty of room to adjust that. But just raising the roof really doesn't do much for our for our flows. It's in fact it's it's amazing how little it affects it. Uh, Alright guys, I think that's enough. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.